Now, uh, more specifically, a, a higher end instrument is going to give us not just a 5%, this is everything systematic, but it's going to talk about the types of systematic error and error. And we want to just talk about a little bit uh, what those might look like uh, because it can be helpful to know where, where is that systematic error coming from? Um, how, is that, how is the calibration curve? Uh, not faulty, but irregular, right? <laughs> not not going to be always uh, exactly what we want. Uh, maybe the easiest to understand uh, is linearity error. And linearity error looks uh, like this if this is our calibration curve. So the dotted line here is our actual data. And then we have, uh, we use a linear curve fit uh, to give us our calibration data. Um, you can see that they don't match perfectly, right? So every time I measure here, right, at this input value, I'm going to get a slightly wrong answer, right? And same up here, I'm going to get a, a slightly wrong answer. Uh, because those instruments, particularly towards the ends of the range, like if it's, you know, a scale that can weigh from one kilogram to 2,000, as I get close to one kilogram and close to 2,000 kilograms, uh, you're going to more often have troubles with things like uh, a linearity error here. So that's one potential uh, systematic error, kind of systematic error with a calibration curve. Another kind is hysteresis, uh, in, uh, which means uh, you can sort of think of this as history. Uh, the instrument has a history. As I move up, Take, increasing my input value, I might get a curve that looks like that. And as I move down, my curve might look like that. Um, so if I always take values going up, I'm going to have uh, a systematic error in one direction. If I always take values while I'm going down, I'm going to have error in another direction. So this can look a lot like random error if you're um, moving back and forth between going up and down. Uh, but how does that happen? Well, uh, friction. Um, inertia of various sorts. Imagine uh, you know, a tire pressure gauge uh, that the air pressure pushes the <laughs> pushes that peg out the end of, of a tire pressure gauge. If there's a little gunk in there, right? A little dirt in that gauge. Maybe that uh, the, the indicator doesn't slide all the way to where it's supposed to. Um, and, and it would always be a little short as it's going out. But as it's going back in, uh, then it's always going to be short in the other direction. So uh, that can create hysteresis. Um, sensitivity error is an actual error, not in the linearity, but in actually the k value. Like if I, um, the slope of that calibration curve um, might be off. Uh, that's a sensitivity error. And a shift or an offset error is. Um, where the calibration curve is, as you might guess, shifted in one direction or another. Uh, and that's relatively easy to fix because we can just subtract or add as long as we can find it, right? As long as we know it's there. Uh, in that case, we can measure a, a, a zero input and we should get a zero output. Um, and that can tell us that we've got some kind of shift error. So a lot of times we use those manufacturers uncertainties to uh, estimate our systematic uncertainty. Um, more preferable is if we can do the calibration ourselves. Um, this actually is maybe less common than, <laughs> than it could be or should be uh, just because it's time consuming, right? It takes time to do a good calibration. Uh, but you want to at least calibrate instruments uh, so regularly over time to make sure they're not drifting over time. Um, but when we calibrate, um, we're still going to have some uncertainty, right? Because we're not going to get a perfect calibration curve. And so we can calculate that, uh, that systematic uncertainty by using uh, a, the uncertainty in a gauge, right? So, or in a, in a standard. So if I calibrate, I have to calibrate against something. Uh, you know, calibrate a scale against a given mass. Um, and so that standard itself is going to have uh, uncertainty and I can use that. 
uh, but more uh, um, significantly, uh, you're going to use that, like you can see that I've got an error of the fit here, right, in my calibration curve. Uh, that error of the fit becomes my systematic uncertainty um, because that, uh, that line doesn't fit that data exactly. Uh, and so I know that there's, uh, there's going to be some, there's something that's not exactly consistent or right in, in that uh, calibration curve, and that becomes my systematic error. Um, and in that case, that uncertainty just takes care of all those instrument uncertainties like linearity and hysteresis and zero shift and stuff like that. Um, it becomes the systematic uncertainty itself. And that's how we uh, calculate the systematic uncertainty. It's mostly about trying to get rid of it uh, as best we can uh, and then trying to come up with uh, an evaluation of that, that number.